Good morning. Good morning. We're going to talk about basketball for a second, if you don't mind. I like talking about basketball because I'm quite convinced that there is a need uh, in the business world and also in the sports uh, circles. I think we need to reinvent ourselves on uh, many occasions. I want to talk to you about an experience, an experience which I think uh, Sports are giving us a lot of good news. They're providing us with a lot of good uh, feelings. But maybe we should think a little bit about those times when we had some really good sensations. I don't want to go back in time too much, but do remember uh, this, and I feel that I'd like you to take part in the reasons and emotions of a team. The reasons, I think we all have those, as we've heard earlier on, and at least for me it has been extremely useful to listen to the previous speakers. The uh, comments were permanently learning, we are permanently learning, and in the world of uh, sports, we're permanently uh, learning things too. A coach never finishes, a, a player, uh, a sportsman will never stop learning until he stops his uh, his career, but there are maybe some technical reasons, but when reason and emotions uh, come together, that is when we have the real strength, the true strength of that group, and uh, or that group of people which we need to turn into a team. I would also like to tell you how I see sports. Sports is an incredible vehicle for the transmission of values. I uh, believe that it's not just the trophy that it has its value. It is the team, the way in which people can uh, transmit sensations and feelings, values, ongoing training, work in a team, solidarity, generosity, friendship, and humility. I think that at the moment, as we look at the new teams, national basketball teams or any other uh, team, we see that we uh, generate an enormous amount of talent. I'm convinced that in some cases, uh, for major sportsmen and women, uh, they have uh, inborn uh, skills, but you can also learn. And for a coach, it is important to discover these talents, to make sure that these talents can flow, can manifest themselves in this talent through uh, uh, situations of leadership in which a player at a given moment in time may not be a leader, but does have to be able to play a leader. I've known a lot of players who have been leaders by their example, by their word, by their effort, by their work, and others who hardly ever open their mouth, but then suddenly they do open their mouth and all the heads turn and uh, understand uh, what that person has just said. So I think those small or big talents need to be exploited and the uh, situation of possible leaders in the future. That is what we need to look at. But well, we had an incredible team with an incredible talent and an extraordinary personality. And we had commitment. If a team has a commitment, and I don't really care if they had a commitment with their friends, with their teammates, with their country, that doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned. But if they had this commitment, we need to take that into account because work will be a lot easier that way for us. The objective is the training, training, preparation. Maybe uh, you can get a prize, but that cannot be the end in itself. Uh, we're working with people rather than with athletes. We have a challenge. We have a permanent challenge every single day whenever we start an adventure, a business. Venture and business are synonymous, really, but we uh, have a lot of expectations, our supporters, the press, but we all knew that this had to be turned into a real team that could really compete. The smart athletes, uh, 
knew that it was only as a team that they could compete and win. And that is where we had to find a balance between freshness, preparation, and through this uh, challenge, through this preparation, we had to work in, uh, in the area of personal relationships, which we felt uh, was a, 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 a team that could be successful. We had a series of basic rules. Before, st before starting to train, the very first uh, meeting that I had with the, with the players, and they were very surprised. We didn't talk about attacks or defense and our tactical uh, systems. No, we talked about the rules on which the group was going to be based. Very few simple rules and clear to understand. Very simple and, you know, proven, uh, underscored by facts. And that is what we were going to be doing. Uh, we were going to be basing ourselves on those rules for the entire competition. Respect, trust, generosity. The first three at that first concentration, and then a little later on, apart from repeating this speech at the second uh, uh, concentration when we, uh, and I wanted to make sure that even though we had been successful, we still wanted to be, um, we wanted to show uh, that uh, we could also uh, have this feeling of humility. And I, and I talked about respect, respect to the individual, the respect that we d all deserve, the respect towards our colleagues, the work of the people that are helping us, and the respect towards the sports challenge. And we talk about trust, not so much I can, but we all can. Of course, trust yourself, but trust your colleagues, trust the technical team, trust to talk, to speak and to take decisions. So trust generates trust, and I think this could be seen and we could turn words into deeds. So I think we sort of succeeded. And you need to prove this through behavior, facts, not words. You need to make sure that uh, you can prove what you said and keep that sensation. Generosity. Look at a video. I'm not going to make any comments, but look at it again, and then I'll make a few brief technical comments, if you don't mind. If we could have the video. I don't want to talk, I don't really want you to, to, to know anything more about the technical aspects, but the only thing you've seen are a few blockages here in the game, but they weren't even in our tactical, uh, they weren't even part of our tactical uh, system. It was a question of discipline and also generosity of a player, a generosity as you can probably see here in the repetition to this uh, particular video. This is Carlos Jimenez, he's trying to block so that uh, his colleague can actually uh, uh, throw the ball. And then there's another blocking. Here you have a, a tall guy with a low guy, with a short guy. This is what we would like to get so that we can really get a shot at the basket. So blocking and blocking. And here, this extra one, so if Pau, because he's very tall, catches the ball, and then of course, this is what Carlos uh, uh, sort of made up, this, this way of blocking, and we introduced this into our technical work. But it's generosity to help others when you need this, even though that is not part of your professional uh, remit. 
generosity is important so that others can generate generosity. All of us are tired and fed up of understanding the strength, but the weaknesses, that is what we need. When we have a team, we have to work in a team. We, know, we need to know exactly where we need help and where this uh, situation of trust needs to be uh, promoted. And we talk about uh, humility. We didn't know how the team was going to react once we received that championship, when we received the first trophy. Humility. This was the final of the World Championship, and we always felt uh, he worked extremely well, and he really did take the whole team on his shoulders. He really worked so hard, Pau Gasol, from the very start, from in the, in, uh, the game and outside the game and of course uh, humility many other examples of humility I think I could have shown but Pao Pao in everything he did both uh, in the game and outside the game in the second season after the world championship because the same work but with a different ending is what we had in the second uh, season ¿Cómo se llama? Cancha de baloncesto. Basketball, what? Cancha. We always need balance in basketball. We need balance in our personal relationship as well. We needed there to be a proper balance between work, leisure time, and rest. We need to be ready for the physical, the tactical, uh, the knowledge, and everything that we needed in order to continue turning from a group into a team. We needed a rest to assimilate uh, the work and also to, to be able to shoulder more physical effort. But some people make uh, don't seem to make a distinction between the rest and leisure time. Rest is what you need. Rest is what you need to be able to face up to the job. And we all always insisted on innovation. We needed to be a team that uh, people uh, with a lot of unexpected features. People may not know us technically and tactically speaking, but they would know us once we uh, received a uh, title uh, at the Japan uh, championship. So innovating, innovating, technically speaking and tactically speaking. If every single day we do exactly the same, players will get really bored. They'll say, oh, we know this, the training is exactly the same as the one we had the day before. But even though it's not a real task or remit of the coach, I think it is even in then and in his case important to be able to change the training and make them fun. We want them to be short. We wanted them to be short but intense. And we also needed some clear, clear missions. The first decision that I took as a coach, even before the very first meeting, I took 12 fixed players who would be in the national team. I didn't want to have a casting. I did want to call 18 and then just keep 12. What did this mean? These players, even before they came to the first meeting, they knew, not entirely, but they knew almost what they were going to do in this a team so they could start working straight away and didn't know whether oh am I going to be part of the team or not I didn't want them to compete against each other I wanted them to compete because of what they could uh, contribute and were there any risks yes there could be risks of course players that were in the team and knew they could uh, sort of not really start working uh, in the team until a little later. Not, I'm not meaning not being in the team, but I mean physically and uh, psychologically they weren't part of the team. Respect, trust and generosity. Straight down to work without any doubts. They wanted everybody to feel, uh, we wanted to, to, to feel that everyone was important. We wanted everyone to be a part of this. No dependencies and we wanted to be fresh for the next challenge, for the next match. So we wanted there to be five plus five plus five in the court so that they could uh, be 
all of them involved in this game. Now here we're watching a game out of an initial five, let's call them the uh, hierarchical uh, five, Calderón, Navarro, Carlos Jiménez, Garbajosa and Pau Gasol. Then we received Sergio Rodriguez and Cabezas and Rudy Fernandez, uh, Rodriguez and Mumbrú and Felipe Reyes and Mark Gasol. So we always had uh, a, a great intensity. A lot of the, 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 the players uh, who may not have played that many minutes, they were probably used to playing 25 or 30 minutes, but here they might just be there for five minutes, but they did give us the most. They gave us their maximum effort from the very moment they entered the court. Well, there were some people because that, that had to feel important. Uh, we needed communication, open and direct. And I think, I think, I really think that you can talk about everything. We're not going to be interfering in very personal matters, but if somebody wants us to talk, uh, because the coach needs to be vigilant. You want to have this kind of exchange of information. It's very important, very important. Everybody has to have access, in my teams anyway, have to have access to 100% of the information. Uh, personal problems, possible injuries. Uh, there needs to be sufficient uh, freedom to have an opinion, to disagree. And I think this is similar to what I said before. People need to be part of this team. They need to feel that they can agree or dissent. Very clear examples. There was a time we were preparing a match and where I proposed, I pr and I'm not going to talk about technical, technical matters, but some, I proposed a certain uh, way of blocking, and I said, well, Pepo, can't we do the defense in a different way? Pepo said, yes, of course, we can do it different. Instead of jumping, we can guide. Yes, because we could get that, reach that player, but we might not be able to reach the other player. We'd be a little late, etc. I said, okay, fine, let's do it that way. They all agreed. So it wasn't the, tr the trainer, the coach that was imposing his view on uh, the players. We were adding up. We were uh, turning into the sum of everyone, and we wanted to make sure that there weren't too many impositions. It's better to try and achieve rather than force uh, individuals to achieve. Now. We wanted to convert sacrifice in fun. This looked like a team that couldn't really attack. We didn't really know, well, people know that attack wins the game, but defense wins the championship. So again, we needed to focus on knowledge and uh, entertainment and love. And I think that we were capable of changing sacrifice, effort, and generosity of defense into fun, a fun game. This is a game, the final, actually, the very last game against Greece, where we worked very well defensively. And there was so much support, both individually and by zones. We changed uh, the individuals. It didn't really matter. We did some enormous work. And obviously, this gave us the assurance that we could counter-attack, but particularly trust, trust in our own defensive possibilities. And I know that this had been the, uh, we uh, ended up with a 47, um, 45 match. I want to sort of just end up, I want to say, something words words by Carlos Navarro not known so much for his defense but he said to the press he said but even I have been defending even I am enjoying this that was a really good example of what could be achieved through joint work team work trust and generosity three defense three defense three attacks three recoveries defense 
by the same player, Sergio Rodriguez, who manages to recover three balls for our team. Three subsequent defense and three attacks. Fortunately, we have had these examples. And we also wanted to know when things went well. Well, everything is more simple. But we wanted to know what would happen if things weren't going that well when we tried uh, for nothing to uh, affect this uh, team. But look what happened in this video. Pau Gasol tries to hit the ball. He breaks his foot and he's asked to uh, uh, play two additional balls. His foot, his foot is broken. And look at him between one uh, one ball and the other. He says, "I need to. I need someone to replace me. I need someone to replace me because his foot was broken. We we needed to know how we were going to win this. Uh, we didn't know how we were going to win this game. These people were very very." They were amazing, amazing experts. And we needed to see how we were going to face up to the end of this match. Uh, because we had to finish this match with the most important player. And we, what we wanted our team to be uh, good, despite the very best uh, player. So what we had after uh, this game, when well, we managed to win this game, we had a few had a few uh, great moments of celebration. Not very many, but when we can went back uh, to the changing rooms, I spent some time with the press. And when I came back into the changing rooms, there was an entire entire team, fully silent. Pau and his brother Mark crying, sitting by his side. Carlos Navarro crying. Jorge Garbajosa sitting in one corner and Carlos Jimenez sad, totally destroyed when we were going to play the first final in a world championship. And then I really realized one of the most important things that I have felt and seen in the basketball playing um, changing rooms, they were not worried about the finals. They were just really sad because their friend, Pau, was not going to be able to play. He was not going to be able to play the, the game, the fun game, which is a final. So this was a full team, not just a group, a team and the emotional aspects are more important than the technical aspects. They could maybe defend better, but it was difficult for them not to be as united as they were. So we wanted to know how we could uh, react. We said, okay, well, let, let's, the next match we're going to win the next match because of Powell and we went straight to we went to Aztubeas. Aztubeas, uh, this was a coach, uh, not a Spaniard. And when a player came, and where am I going to sit? What am I going to do? Where am I going to do? Where am I going to stand? Well, the coach was a little, little fed up and said, Aztubeas. Aztubeas really means, well, you decide. You decide. Uh, you know, this is what we've been working on for so long, so that at the end of the day, everyone would put his talent and his effort for the good of the team. To Navarro and Garbajosa, who did not play a good semi-final, but they were important, but they hadn't really done a very good job in the previous match, and they did play a very good final match. And what I'm trying to prove, and this does take time, but it does uh, work, it's not so much a question of teaching people how to fish. It's a question of actually going out there and fishing. So look at Navarro, look at Garrajosa, because they played an extraordinary match, uh, offensively speaking. And actually, they hadn't really played very well in the previous match. Oy. Well, as you can see, they scored. They scored here. And because we knew what we were doing, we knew that there was generosity behind every single player because we knew that they were the ones who had to decide on how to 
to work this game offensively. Twenty points, twenty points in the final matches. So we didn't know and we wanted that we could be a, a good exemplary team, both when we win and when we lose. It's a question of passing on the values. It's not just to get a medal or a trophy or a gold medal. When we played in the Eurobasket, even though we got a silver medal, I think we had exactly the same sensations, exactly the same. I talked about planning, simple rules, generosity, humility, balance, and then work, rest, leisure time, the need to have open and direct communication, <coughs> and the criterion of moving, turning effort into emotion. First, the person, then the player. This is my final video in which I will show you a little bit about what all the players did. True examples of dedication, respect, trust, and generosity.
wish you a lot of basketball. Thank you.